In this video, I'd like to examine a few basic concepts in Maya that will help you understand how things work. And that might be a little different than what you see in other similar programs. And those three things are nodes, attributes, and construction history. We'll also take a look at a few, a few important windows or palettes that you'll use to find this information. So what we see here is I've just got a simple model made, sort of a little rapid antigen test palette. And we'll go through the process of making something like this, just so you can see how uh, something is comprised of a number of nodes connected by their attributes. And those things are linked by construction history. In some other programs, you might see a window like this in Maya. This is the outliner where it lists all the objects in your scene. Uh, but it also may have a list of things that are affecting these objects. So you might have a, uh, a subsurface division modifier attached to this model, or you might have a stack of modifiers somewhere. Um, Maya works a little differently than that and is sometimes not as obvious. So let's just take a look by creating a simple object. Oh, and by the way, another window I have open here is the node editor. Um, if you don't see that, uh, which you won't, it doesn't come up uh, by default in any of the settings, but uh, if we go to Windows Node Editor, you can open it there. So here we have a cube, and in the node editor with the object selected, if I press this button, we can see that there are a number of nodes that are indicated here. These boxes are nodes, and they're connected by some sort of construction history uh, linking one attribute or a number of attributes to another or a number of other attributes. So if we take a look at the polycube here, um, this one here, which is sort of disconnected from the others, is the transform node. And this gives information about its position its in space, its rotation, its scale, uh, anything to do with transformations. So you can see that as I move it up and down in Y, the translate Y changes. Let me just hide this plane. But in addition to the transform node, we also have a shape node. And I'm looking at these things over here in the channel box. And this gives us easy access to these attributes, which uh, make up the node. So if I go to polycube shape one, you can see there's really nothing here, except an in indication of an input. So there's an input connected to this polycube one. And we see that over here and it's connected over there. So that's what this input means. There's a connection between another node and this one. But why can't we see anything for polycube shape one? Well, if we go to the attribute editor, which is control A on your keyboard, um, you can see more information. So the channel box just shows a, sort of a curated amount of information and attributes, whereas the attribute editor will show you a lot more. Another thing to notice about the attribute editor is that those different nodes we can see that are involved in this object are also listed up here as tabs. So as you do more things to an object, you'll see more tabs up here. So this is one way you can navigate to these things. So when I created the cube originally, I could have gone to create polygon primitives and opened up the option box. And this is where we can set the initial parameters of the polycube. But you'll notice that it's exactly the same as our polycube node. So that information is preserved and we can change it after the fact. Change the height to maybe 0 0.3. I can change the depth to let's say 4 and then the width to 2. Right, so I could have set those at the beginning but now I can change them here and that's because construction history is still in effect. So there's a construction history between this node and that node and changes to this one now will make changes to this. I'm going to <clears throat> add some uh, details here so I need a little more geometry so I can add a couple of subdivisions in the initial width and then the depth I can do the same maybe even a little bit more. So if you take a look at the polycube over here in the outliner, I can click on it and select it. It doesn't show the construction history in here. It can show relationships between things, but it won't show you the construction history. If I click on this and then go to the channel box, I can see the inputs here. So there's the polycube one. That's the 
creation node and I can make changes in here like you saw me doing earlier. But what if I perform some other actions on here? So let's say I want to make the sample well here in uh, on the face of this. So I'm going to select a face and then I could either go to my modeling toolkit and press extrude here or I can just hold down shift with the transform to, uh, translate tool engage and then it will extrude that inward and I'll scale this face down a little bit. So I've done something new to the model and now you'll notice that a new node has been added to the network. So it's best to think of each object as a network of nodes. So now connected between the polycube creation and the polycube shape is a poly extrude face. So one thing you can do with this is if I select the poly extrude face and go into the channel box, I can still make changes to this. So for example, if I adjust the translate Y of that new face that's created, then we can move it up and down. So you can make those changes after the fact, although that's not always that useful. But let's put another extrusion on here and see how Maya handles that. So take, let's say these two faces, W for translate, hold down shift and extrude that in. I'll scale this down a little bit. Now, if we look in the node editor, let me just map these out again. Here we have the polycube going into the poly extrude face one, the first one, and then a poly tweak. So that's something just separating these two different extrudes. And there's my second extrude. So this is what we call the construction history. And you might get to a point where you realize this construction history, you don't need it anymore. And you might want to simplify your model. And to do that, we delete history. So we go to edit, delete by type, history. And now you can see all of those elements are gone. And we're left just with a polycube shape and the transform node. Let's do a couple more things to our model and see how the construction history continues to form. And so I'm going to add a bevel. So I'm going to double click that edge loop and just go around here and do the same thing on the bottom. So I'll just go to my modeling toolkit and go to bevel. Just the sensitivity of my virtual slider and just change the fraction and maybe add two segments. But now let's see what it's done with the construction history. And as you can imagine, there's now a poly bevel on here. And if we look in the channel box, select this object, we can see the poly bevel here and we can go in and make changes. So let's say the uh, fraction, I want it to be a sort of softer shoulder. So I can maybe instead of 0 0.23, I'll type 0 0.4. You can see it adjusts this slightly. So construction history is useful to allow you to go back in and, and tweak those changes. And that's really how nodes and attributes work in construction history. There's a lot more to learn about how to connect nodes through attributes. Uh, but for now, just getting that basic idea is important. So think about that while you're working on something. And if you no longer need to go back and make changes to your construction history, delete the history, make a cleaner, uh, more efficient model. Thanks.